Okay, if you're going to use uh, sensors, industrial sensors, it's a good idea to get familiar with the sensor before you use it. Um, here's a capacitive sensor, and this is a PNP type sensor, as you can see there. And the number 1 through 25 millimeter below is just telling you the distance, the sensing distance that it's capable of. Um, there's a adjustment screw on the bottom, and there's a light that shows you when the sensor is on. And I'll show you in a second how that works. Um, also, there's a little diagram here that shows you how to hook it up. So you apply your positive voltage to um, the positive input of the sensor. And I'll tell you in a minute what that is, because this doesn't really tell you anything about the color coding. And your load, or the thing that the sensor is going to be hooked to, it could be a sink sinking input is the little symbol there with the square symbol with a slash through it and then your negative goes to the bottom terminal of the sensor now the color coding for the sensor is your it's a little unconventional compared to other things in electronics but in sensors our brown wire is our positive our blue wire is the negative and our output signal is the black wire so one way to just tell what's going on with the sensor and, and get familiar with it is just to hook it up to a 9 volt battery some sensors will work well with this and, and others won't so if the, you don't get any response from 9 volts then you will probably have to use a 24 volt power supply or um, a voltage that's more appropriate for the sensor so I'm going to hook this up the brown terminal is going to the positive terminal and the blue terminal is going to negative. Now what I should be able to do is get the sensor light to come on when I get it close to an object as you can see down below. Okay now all that indicator light is telling us is that the sensor is actually act actuated. Now to get the the signal out of the black wire we've got to hook it up a certain way since this is a PNP sensor the output has to be between the black wire and ground because this is what we call a sourcing sensor sourcing means that when the sensor is activated and you can see it's on right now because of my my hand it's sensing my hand um, but sourcing means that uh, when the sensor is actuated it completes the path to V plus and sinking means the opposite. The sensor completes the path to ground or V minus. And a lot of times people get ground and V minus confused. For the most part with sensors, ground is minus, but don't get the idea that ground is always minus. It doesn't have to be. And we'll talk about that in later lectures. So the next thing we'll do is we'll hook this up to a external LED and we'll see what it does. Okay, we're going to hook the sensor up to see how it supplies uh, current to a load and I'm just going to use a small incandescent bulb just because it's easy to interface to. Um, an LED is nice but you have to have a current limiting resistor for that. This is real quick and easy and it, it's fairly bright so you can see what's going on so anyway I've got these two leads hooked to the incandescent bulb first thing we're going to do though is we're going to take our battery here a 9 volt battery and I've got the red lead hooked to plus and the green lead hooked to minus on the battery so the red lead's going to go to my brown wire the green lead is going to go to my blue wire don't go to black that's easy to do because most of the time we identify black with um, negative but that's not the case with sensors also be careful because not all sensors have a color code that makes sense uh, for the most part you'll see brown blue and black or brown blue and white if it's uh, depending on the type of sensor it is uh, but what you see most of the time for a three wire sensor is brown, blue, and black. Okay, so I've got this hooked up 
to power. And so if I take the sensor and I put it down on the table, it's sensing the tabletop, or I can have it sense my hand. Notice if I even grab it on the sides, it goes off. These capacitive sensors are pretty sensitive that way. Okay, so that's indicator lights telling me that the sensor is actually act activated. Okay, so it's activated, but we're not driving anything yet with it. So let's hook up our load. And before I do that, let me go back to this uh, diagram here on the sensor. This particular uh, sensor has some information here that's useful. Uh, the current carrying capability for the sensor is 300 milliamps, and it tells you that the capability, the voltage capability for the sensor is 6 volts to 30 volts, and you may be able to see that or not. It's not coming in real clear here, but there you go. So it's 6 volts to 36 volts at 300 milliamps. Turns out my lamp is going to draw about half that, so we're safe. Okay, so now I'm going to hook up the sensor to the lamp, and so the way I do that is remember this is a sourcing sensor so we're going to hook the black terminal to one of the leads and because it's sourcing we want the other lead to go to ground so once I do that I have a path a possible path when the sensors actuated so let's go ahead and actuate it and there we go we've got a complete circuit the sensor switch the PNP switch in the sensor is allowing the positive voltage from the battery to reach the load, go through the load and to ground when I activate the sensor. Now you can have normally open sensors like this in which the switch closes when you activate the sensor, but you can also have normally closed sensors that open the switch when you activate the sensor. So you have to be careful about when you're ordering a sensor that you order it with the right characteristics. In reality, it doesn't matter what kind of sensor you're using. If you're going to hook it up to a PLC, you can get any kind of behavior you want through the PLC programming. So whether you have a normally closed or normally open sensor, it doesn't really matter. But it does matter if your piece of equipment is already set up to handle a normally closed or a normally open sensor you have to get the right sensor for that situation unless you want to go back in and rewrite your PLC program to accommodate the new sensor. So I hope this was useful. Um, I'll do another one on inductive sensors next and also we'll look at sensor specifications.